We're going to get ready and get started with our program this morning. Thank you all for, uh, for coming out bright and early. Our hungover friends will be here later. Um, but as I told the panel, they, there's a large contingent of streaming viewers. Yesterday's 10 a.m. panel had somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 viewers live, so um, we're not alone. All right, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the first panel of this morning, Limitless Future Proofing, How Any Blockchain Use Case Can Be Built with Polkadot, with our moderator, Stefan Sopic. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to, to our talk. Um, as, as Peter said, today we'll talk about future proofing with Polkadot and limitless, limitless potential for different use cases on the Polkadot platform. And with me, I have three such unique use cases, Giga from Origin Trail, Sergey from Robonomics, and Chris from Big Country. And so I thought it would be nice by starting all of you with um, um, basically introducing yourselves and introducing your projects. And Giga, we can start with you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, I'm Giga Dreo. I'm one of the co-founders of Origin Trail, which is the, first, the world's first decentralized knowledge graph, organizing humanity's most important assets, making them discoverable, verifiable, and valuable. That's a very, very long title, I know. But essentially, what Origin Trail does, we're taking the same technology as Google has, which is a knowledge graph, to organize uh, assets. At the same time, we're overlaying this technology on blockchain. It's a multi-chain uh, multi project. And we have over 2,500 nodes globally supporting this network. Uh, currently, this network is being used by companies wor worldwide and also individuals. For example, 40% of the, all the imports to the, to the United States are secured using Origin Trail. So for example, you'd have Walmart, Costco, JCPenney exchanging information on audit reports on some 22,000 factories from across the globe. And that way, they would achieve certain efficiencies and trustworthiness, et cetera, in, in the imports to the United States. Another one, another one very important one, is aid trust. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have uh, to host uh, um, Courtney Salisbury of BSI, the British Standards Institution. And she's going to be telling us more about the pharmaceutical case, how Origin Trail is, is used there. So when I'm saying uh, important assets, essentially we're talking about the very important assets that also aim to kind of protect humanity, protect uh, supply chains, making them work for us uh, regular people. And um, last week, uh, we just uh, landed and secured our own Polkadot parachain slot, which is awesome, and uh, we're also on a mission um, to land on Polkadot uh, relay chains, uh, so layer, layer zero, uh, on 4th of June. So it's, uh, it's an exciting week, week ahead of us. It's very exciting. Thank you so much, Sergey. Um, Sergey. Uh, yeah. My name is Sergey. I'm 10 years in crypto. So I remember the time when Bitcoin was around $100. <laughs> and it was more like a toy for developers. Um, Last seven years, I'm working on a project with name Robonomics, where we try to find solutions to connect complex robotics and Internet of Things solutions with blockchain in suitable form. It means not just connect everything and every type of robots to blockchain, but try to find suitable use cases for that. So with this task, we spent uh, seven years and made around 17 R&D projects. So, yeah. Thank you. That's impressive. Chris. Uh, hey, everybody. Chris here from BitCountry. I'm in charge of the community side for BitCountry. I will explain the value proposition of BitCountry is offering Metaverse as a service. So you as a business owner, as an influencer, as a KOL, or just as a person that wants to build your own Metaverse, to launch it or to have your community engage with you in a more immersive way that rather than just like watching your live streams and all those things, it, you can do so. And we are offering actually all the tools. So without having any knowledge uh, in coding, 3D design, block, blockchain technology, you will be able to create your own metaverse, have your own NFT marketplace, uh, mint your own NFTs. And that's mainly Kind of it, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chris. OK, so we mentioned L0, and we know that Polkadot is a, is a shared blockchain, meaning it connects several chains together in a single network, allowing them to process transactions in parallel and exchange data between the chains in a secure way. And um, so when we, when, we talk about, uh, when we talk about shared security and tapping into shared security um, of the Polkadot network, 
um, I wanted to ask um, all of you, um, what is um, your shared security use case or what made you um, um, decide that um, Polkadot's shared security is uh, something that um, uh, figures in your plans? And we can start with uh, Sergey this time. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, as I said, we started seven years ago uh, on Ethereum. So uh, we spent around three years with implementation in form of smart contracts. And in 2018, 19, we found information about Substrate Framework and decided to try to build our own blockchain because in many cases, after two or four years from your start of your projects, in form of smart contracts, you will find some topics what you cannot resolve in form of of smart contracts. And sometimes you will need to build your own blockchain solution. So we think that we need it, but at the same time, we really don't interest in was in creating our own security level. We know that it's uh, something different. We want to build custom blockchain, but we don't really want to uh, care about security of this blockchain. So Polkadot was most interesting solution in this case for us. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Chris, um, how about you? How is uh, shared security helping Metaverse? Shared security in the Metaverse, as Sergey was mentioning earlier, I mean, it's the Polkadot ecosystem gives you actually the opportunity to focus developing your product without worrying in the whole creating or actually incentivizing the whole in infrastructure. Like, as we know, the Ethereum blockchain has now all these miners now migrating into validators, but there needs to be like thousands of validators to be able to have the blockchain really secure. Polkadot, with this shared security system, allows you just to create your custom blockchain, do it, adapt it to your product, and just connect it and enjoy actually all these functionalities, all these security, all this um, interoperability across different blockchains. And in the metaverse, interoperability is going to be pretty important. Why? Because uh, we might create some applications, but other people might want to customize or have specific features from other blockchains or from other parachains that are like, uh, mm, how do I say it, like required for them to use a metaverse. Let it be security or let it be a KYC. We, as BitCountry, we don't want to get involved with KYC, but maybe we can plug and kill as a parachain. And they do all the KYC. We just implement uh, their palette into, into our blockchain, and there you go. Yeah, amazing. And, uh, and as, as Chris mentioned, um, I think um, networking effects and the networking effects of the relay chain are extremely important because basically you get them out of the box. Everybody who connects to the relay chain and adds functionality to it benefits from the networking effects. So I was thinking, Jiga, you can expand a little bit more on that. Yeah, I just spoke uh, two weeks ago with uh, the formulator of the law of the network effects, Bob, Bob Metcalf. He's one of our advisors and discussing how, what are the um, specifics of this, of this law. And essentially what it tells you is that the value of the whole network or the, the cluster of networks will, 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 will grow with a squared number of users within the network. And you can also like, do several deri deri derivations from there on because this is not only a network. Blockchains are not, not only network of, of people, users, but also network of objects, assets. So we're talking about a huge potential for kind of essentially driving the value uh, of, of blockchains. Now, if, imagine you put together several uh, incredible parachains projects which already have their own existing uh, user base. We have an exist existing uh, community which is very eager to run nodes. We have an existing business community of partners which are already servicing uh, their uh, clients, um, thousands of their clients uh, across the globe. And all of this, if, if you pull this together, the, the, the outcome, the, the overall value is much larger than just the sum of, of, of our contribution. It's essentially something that grows exponentially in value when put together. And like you mentioned, the, the, the shared security and the pooled security, it's very important. We have been building 
on other blockchains since 2016. And um, just putting um, consequential costs aside for, for the business partners using such blockchains, of course, that's important, scalability, but also the, the shared security and the things that we can achieve together far surpasses um, any like networking technology that has uh, been ex in existence so far. We have been following Polkadot since 2016, 16, since the in inception of the white paper, although it was not live back then, so we had to push and uh, struggle with uh, other chains, and now it's uh, really a fun time to have all that footprint coming into, into Polkadot and then complementing the existing capabilities of other um, parachain builders, which have their own certain capacities, which we do not have. And this will create the biggest magic in the future once we compile all those um, capacities that we share together, pull them together, and create better value for uh, each respective user base. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, <clears throat> I want to um, actually expand on, on that a little bit. So um, I think uh, both Yuzhiga and Chris, you mentioned interoperability as, as one of the keys. And so uh, I think it's um, uh, valuable to mention now that um, uh, Polkadot ecosystem or relay chain as a L0 chain um, actually allows uh, other chains to connect to it and benefit from everything. And, and um, one of, the, one of the, our value propositions, I guess, uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem is a substrate framework, which is, uh, which is used to um, easily and, and quickly build uh, blockchains, well, depending on how complicated your use case is. Um, um, but it's um, open source uh, blockchain so uh, software developer kit. And currently, uh, hundreds of blockchains have been building with substrate, primarily Polkadot and Kusama, but every, every one of you as well. And uh, one of the features of Substrate is the forkless upgrades, right? So uh, concept of uh, upgrading uh, live functionality on a blockchain without a hard fork. Um, and uh, a third thing that I want to mention here uh, when we talk about uh, communication between chains, especially you, Chris, mentioned um, uh, potentially uh, implementing uh, KYC from another parachain because you don't want to develop uh, something that already exists. Uh, right uh, in the past month, we added XEM um, as a cross-messaging uh, system to um, um, basically Polkadot and Kusama, um, which allows you to, um, from one chain, um, execute um, actions uh, or remotely on a different chain, and those actions could be um, some kind of uh, transactions or teleporting of assets and things like that. So we have a lot of uh, tools in the Polkadot ecosystem for the future proofing, uh, which is the topic of today's talk. So what my question is, um, how has Polkadot tooling enabled you to future-proof your project? And we can start with Chris this time. As you were mentioning, XCM opens all these kind of features that we can use. And I think in the metaverse, uh, you don't have to be just like siloed. I mean, we are planning to eventually, once we launch on, on Polkadot, we are planning to potentially have 100,000 lands, which potentially can be actually 100,000 metaverses. So yes, there will be interoperability within BitCountry, but once other blockchains want to, I don't know, have their own NFTs, have their own tokens and incentivize, uh, even build their own metaverses using Bitcoin technology, there is a way people now know uh, the bridges, but Polkadot, the Polkadot ecosystem doesn't use these bridges because, well, they are quite insecure, as they have been proven. Because, yes, the different blockchains might be fully secure, but the, bridge, uh, the bridging of the assets uh, kind of centralizes uh, the information that you are trying to move from one chain to the other. And for us, uh, the fact that XEM gives you this possibility to transfer assets connect other chains and have other chains actually building their own metaverses if they want to get their community more involved and uh, create whatever world they want to be because we believe that there is no one metaverse. So why don't we just allow people to build uh, their own version of the metaverse? So XEM gives us these possibilities uh, without risking the security of the people that are willing to build their metaverses uh, with BitCountry technology. Thank you. 
Thank you. And then that's a, that's a, it's a very good point. XCM messages are actually um, uh, rev uh, lev leveraging the shared security of the underlying relay chain. So uh, you can be sure that when you're doing some, some of those uh, high value transactions um, between the two chains, um, you know that uh, security is there. Um, Sergey, how about you? Yeah. Um, for us, most important was started to build our own blockchain on nice framework. <laughs> Um, because, uh, for example, we focused on implementation for Internet of Things market, but when you're starting to build your own blockchain, you will need to get all stuff around cryptography, about other stuff, what important for decentralized networks, and if you will look on architecture of your solution, when you need to build each pieces of your own blockchain, you will find that your use case, it's only around 10% of all stuff what you have. In the same time, uh, if you try to use some frameworks for that, you should care who really made this framework, uh, because you should trust to these people about cryptography, about decentralized approach, about communication layer inside framework, and parity in 2015-2017 was most experienced team uh, uh, about decentralized technology. They built most best, as I know, uh, client for Ethereum parity. Our miners shifting from Go Ethereum to parity in 2016. Um, secondly, they built Bitcoin client, and when you found that the uh, developers team have a, a lot of experience with the most favorite uh, client for Ethereum and they have an implementation for Bitcoin. So it means they have a, a lot of experience what they can put inside one framework and you can start to build with a trust to this framework. So this is the main thing what we uh, have, uh, what we had in time when we started. And when we found information about forkless approach, it was second part of the our questions about your own blockchain. Because uh, you, every time you're starting from scratch, if you build your blockchain in the last two years, it's not means that it will be 100% ready to work. In the next years, you will need to upgrade your network. And you know how it's happening with Bitcoin and Ethereum every time when you need to change something. All small things not happening, never, never. And big movements every time need to double check and, and so on. So on-chain governance, forkless approach, in our, in our in our opinion, it's a very good approach for startups and small teams who wanted to create their own blockchain. That's awesome. That's, that's exactly the, the, the line of thinking that, that was happening at the time with uh, Gavin and um, Rob, who co-founded uh, Polkadot. They were th thinking, we have all this experience building different types of blockchains, and we think we know um, what would be the, the, the best way of going about this. Yeah. Awesome. And, and Jiga, like you can answer this question, but also uh, from a perspective of um, you tried different chains as well. So maybe you can, you can uh, talk from that perspective, what made you decide on Polkadot ecosystem? Well, besides the most apparent ones, scalability, so not sacrificing decentralization for, for scalability. This is one, then secondly, the network effects. And uh, third, that uh, the, the, the guests here have already touched upon is the Common set of rules that are, you know, laid forth by the Polkadot uh, by the Polkadot uh, movement, and uh, these um, these rules are essentially um, making cost or kind of shortening the lead time before you can actually deploy a solution on parachain or just deploy the parachain. Uh, and uh, this is not only important for the teams but also for the open source community of developers that already know and understand how how parachains function, how substrates, uh, substrate uh, functions. And they come in to your ecosystem already equipped with knowledge. Uh, so far, we've been you know, putting a lot of efforts into educating our community 
as to how they can use the decentralized knowledge graph, which we will continue to do. Uh, and it's of the utmost importance that they already have an understanding of how the layer one functions and also the, the layer zero, but most importantly, layer one and how they can build bridges between, between the parachains uh, so that we can connect value propositions from let's call it Google for Web3, because Branimir is going to hold a presentation on how decentralized knowledge graph is essentially Google for Web3, how we can pair those capabilities with, uh, with the IoT-related or um, robotics parachains with the metaverse, and uh, without having these common set of rules which, um, which developers can understand from the get-go without you having to educate, is, is super important. It's, it, it shortens the lead time for us to deliver value to, to, to users. Awesome. So um, I have some individual questions for each one of you, and then we can open it up to, to everybody else. Um, so um, for Giga, um, two thirds of all the world's GDP is uh, actually supply chains. Um, so how do you help, how does Origin Trail help companies with uh, uh, your supply chain solution? Yeah, it's a, it's a very broad question. Uh, also, like you said, supply chains are perhaps the most important human activity, and they, they span from like so many uh, things. Um, essentially, whatever we do right now is a supply chain of sort. Uh, and uh, we are very active in some, um, some very important uh, sectors within this broader supply chain uh, arena. Uh, and Courtney here from, from the British Standards Institution, she's going to go more into details as to how we help um, get donated medicines to the, uh, to the intended destinations so that those who are underprivileged can um, cure their hemophilia situation. And hemophilia can be, a deadly, uh, can, be, can be deadly if you don't receive medicines. And Origin Trail along with BSI Solution is essentially helping donor organizations, so the bigger pharmaceuticals, to get crucial medicines to the uh, intended markets without risking that the medicines will you know, go uh, across some other border and be sold on the black market. So it's a very important, I would say, human aspect that we're also, we're also tackling in, in supply chains. And then we also have like, things that are perhaps near and dear to, to, to those who hold certain assets. It might be a, a digital asset, such as an NFT, um, NFT uh, asset that you might want to not only protect in terms of the 42 character string, but also protect the underlying asset which is uh, not, it does not necessarily need to be stored on, on a centralized uh, service. You can use decentralized knowledge graph for that. So something near and dear to people, such as NFTs or even uh, physical objects, which are also part exactly. of, the, of the supply chains. Uh, you can essentially bring information and encapsulate information as an asset. We talked about a lot about digi digitalization previously uh, with enterprises, and now we should be talking ownership, assets, because this is also important, not only for individuals, but also enterprises. Assets bring ownership, ownership brings value, and supply chains uh, is, uh, are all about the value. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I want to ask Chris then um, um, about uh, putting my watch on a, on a, on a metaverse uh, avatar that I will have. But also, um, I think uh, what is actually important here is we had uh, here on the panel yesterday uh, representatives from Meta, and they were talking about their uh, investment in the metaverse, which seems to be huge. Um, so. Um, my question for you would be, why is it important for Metaverse to be decentralized? Yesterday, he was mentioning one of the topics in regards to regulation and kind of um, how you limit and how you moderate the content that is put out uh, to the people using your application. So uh, in my opinion, if you give or if you as an owner of your own metaverse give your community the opportunity to vote uh, what content they want to, to have in their metaverse what content they don't want uh, in their metaverse i think it takes away that charge that load from you and if regulators come and they say this is happening in your metaverse i mean only the community that agreed with this set of rules are the ones using my metaverse. The other ones are using other metaverses. So it's, it, kind of, it kind of gives you the power to choose what you want to consume 
what you want to create, what you want to share, and how you want to use uh, your own technology. So the community uh, is the one that is taking the direction of your project, of your metaverse, of your applications, and it's not you who are offering the service and they need to adapt because it was uh, the way you design it or the way uh, they told you to design it. Yeah, that makes total sense. And also, like, uh, what you're basically describing is this multiverse of uh, different metaverses that could, be, um, that could have different rules in them. Um, but you can freely go through them. Definitely, yeah. Like our approach is to have these metaverses connected. So if you find that this metaverse is already implementing something that you are not happy with, you can just move all your things without uh, any security risk or anything. I mean, I will just move all uh, my certificates, all my NFTs, my avatars, because you can have more than one avatar mm -hmm. if you want, all your avatars. Uh, even the utility NFTs that are within the metaverse, they can be transferred to another metaverse that is compatible as well. If they, they, if they want to uh, allow these kind of things to be listed or shown in their metaverse, yeah, you can just transfer them. Awesome. And I, uh, and I have a question for Sergey, uh, uh, which is also an open-ended question. Now, but it's, how did you get inspired to use blockchain in robotics? Yeah. Um, uh, for many cases around blockchain uh, happening in more decentralized finance or finance approach. So I can. And when I said that i building a project in the last seven years with uh, focus on robotics, it's a standard question why, why it can be interesting for robotics. Um, basically, I, get, I have a one simple question, uh, answer for this question, and I guess it will be enough. Um, every day, when you pay from your smartphone to vending machine or, or any automated services around you for parking or, or something else, you have, a, in reality, two transactions. First is a banking account transaction where you transferring your money to other account. At second, happening in clouds between bank and, for example, Amazon Web Service, which control vending machine. Because uh, you need to transfer information uh, about payment and technical details. For example, what type of coffee you want. Not only price of coffee, but what type of coffee too. So right now, most of the solutions on market for that have a uh, one part with the financial flow of the data, and second is separated with the technical details. But when you, you can, when you try to use blockchain or smart contracts or cryptocurrency, you can combine technical and economical details into one transaction, and it means you will never like uh, pay for coffee and not get your coffee, or you can imagine more complex scenarios like uh, containers in, in supply chains, like uh, your IoT devices inside container can be like insurance of everything inside with humidity and temperature was and good, and that is the reason why payment can go to the next account. So uh, we can connect robotics and Internet of Things to blockchain to just make uh, next step to combine technical and economical details into one transaction. Is that so? It's simple. But every time we need to understand only one thing. When I get this button on this hand and put on this, we don't need transaction to blockchain. It means uh, inside uh, complex robotics for communication, we don't need to have a blockchain. But if I don't know, after pilot track, going to lights out store to bring to you your, uh, your items, they need to interact because after pilot track from one company, a logistics company, and uh, for example, uh, lights out factory can be by other company. So in intercorporation communications, yeah, it's, it's a good place to connect your robotics directly to each other 
with the blockchain and our payments will be inside technical flow. Yeah, and you, uh, first of all, I, wanna, I just want to say to everybody here that you can actually uh, get your coffee in the, in the other room uh, with uh, one simple transaction, because uh, uh, Sergey here brought a, a coffee maker that um, uh, actually um, is integrated with the Substrate framework and is working through Kusama. Um, but also, I, I, I want to notice that we, uh, when cutting out the, the middleman, it's not just uh, that you're cutting out the, the bank transfer itself, but you're cutting out like reliance on the cloud infrastructure, yes. right? Yes. And in, in certain cases, well, if your security uh, is important to you, and we had our aut outages of like big uh, cloud providers as well, and then they also have shady security as well. Um, so this is something that uh, you could completely cut out and have direct dependency between um, um, yeah. two basically machines. Yeah, yeah, it's a, like a second part. As I said, I will give you a simple answer, but more complex answers about side effects of uh, connecting all robotic stuff to cloud. Because you know that uh, with internet, Solutions based on cloud, sometimes we have a big problems like a Twitter not working and wow, <laughs> everywhere, everyone is scaring what will be happened if smart city will be just switch off for the next six hours. So it can be if you will connect our devices inside city to cloud. And it's not depend on how good companies, it's Intel, IBM, or Microsoft, on long term, like uh, 20 years, you will see blackout, yeah. of course. So, yeah. Uh, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, OK, so I, I think uh, we have uh, time for another question, and that is, um, what is next for your project? And we can start from Giga. Like I said, we're landing our parachain on Polkadot on June 4th. Uh, then we have another very important update coming on the decentralized knowledge graph called uh, V6. And V6 is going to um, add to the current cap cap capabilities of the DKG, which will in the future not only allow companies and individuals to use it to um, attach attestations, link information, link data, but also essentially to issue assets on the decentralized knowledge graph. Uh, and that also means that you'll be essentially you're going to be able to use decentralized knowledge graph as sort of a Google uh, browsing through the vastness of uh, multiverses or omniversa, uh, vastness of other crucial assets that not only exist within uh, different blockchain ecosystems, but also potentially in some centralized systems. And uh, what we aim to do here is essentially to scratch the surface. And if we consider uh, the Web3 world right now, uh, the, 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 what we see as the tip of the iceberg, what we aim to do, and we believe that this is going to be kind of the next push for the entire Web3 Web3 industry. We aim to bring the, the mainstream users into into the into the Web3, and we see Origin Trail uh, as as one of the components that has its own uh, particular uh, value proposition, and it has to be done in unison with uh, with other uh, with other fundamental components such as Polkadot, Kusama. Uh, uh, and, and other projects aiming to connect metaverses and aiming to connect also the, the world of uh, robotics, uh, IoT devices. And this is uh, what we feel that the future holds. Uh, and it's, it's happening sooner rather than, than later. It's, it's already here. And perhaps it's more visible to us. And uh, I'm really looking forward for, again, for Courtney's presentation. So welc I welcome you to join us a little bit later. And Courtney essentially is going to be talking about something which we all feel that uh, belongs to future, but it's already here. It's happening now. Awesome. And Sergey, what is next for you? Um, yeah, uh, we have a power chain on Kusama, and our plans to stay inside Kusama ecosystem first in the next two years. We will not to participate in auctions for Polkadot power chains, uh, because we think that uh, First of all, we can bring uh, IoT solutions for your smart home first, and because it's more simple than to start working with the corporations or factories, and it's not meaning that the Polkadot much more have a good level of shared security, they have a security audits and so on. It's just a question about time of your communicating with the big companies. So uh, we think that 
First of all, what we should do is uh, connecting standard sensors and IoT devices, what you can buy on Amazon or on AliExpress, to Kusama parachain to control outside your home under Kusama parachain con control. So it means that you can use it in any places in the world, in the United States and in China. And the, one of the good example why it's can be interesting for you because you know about some startups uh, in California that create some IoT devices connected directly to their cloud, and when the company was disappeared from market, it's not working for you. So you spend your money uh, uh, to some devices, spend a lot of time with building your home, and after some years, because this company not existing on market, you can use it. So we wanted to fix that first in the next two years, and only after that going to Polkadot to present our solutions for corporates or factories. Going out of market or uh, different jurisdictions, right? Yeah. And uh, laws changing and cloud services not being available in different jurisdictions as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Chris, what is next for the metaverse, the big country? For big country, yeah. So we are currently uh, running on Kusama. Uh, our product is on alpha testing now. Uh, we have few people uh, helping us with testing, improving our product. Once the testing and once the improvements, uh, we are planning actually uh, for this first set of tools that we want to offer the community. Already, we will uh, open the alpha testing for everybody, so we get more feedback. We test, uh, stress test all uh, our infrastructure, see uh, what things need to be improved as well. Once we are 100% sure that everything is working fine, uh, we might also look uh, to secure a, a parachain in the Polkadot relay chain as well. Awesome. Uh, what else, what else? Yeah, so w I'm hoping that after we finalize the, fa the fast development, because Kusama is a parachain, or actually is, a, an ecosystem for fast development. So once we finalize this fast development, we improve all our things because we're doing it like around the clock. Hopefully one day we can have uh, the robots from uh, Sergey uh, doing 3D scans and making missions in this space and simulating uh, everything in the metaverse. You can plan secondary robots to perform different missions based on this scan, or maybe implementing uh, the centralized graphs, uh, as uh, of Giga was mentioning. So looking forward to more implementations as well once we fully launch. Awesome. Thank you so much. I would uh, open up um, this, uh, now uh, this panel to the questions from the audience. Does, uh, ah, we have a question here. Can you please uh, introduce yourself? Before Hi, you? yes. Uh, this is uh, Constantine with Beneficious. And the question, I'm not sure to whom, maybe to the ones who want to pick it up. A um, number of investors and developers are considering various platforms, blockchains, to invest, to develop their projects with. And obviously, what we need to, to understand uh, is that the platform will be around and will be prominent in 10 years' time. And obviously, if Polkadot is successful, there will not be Ethereum, there will not be, I don't know, Cosmos, SDK, there will be a Polkadot. But what the question is, how, how do you, why do you con continue investing in this particular ecosystem and what, may, what gives you the assurance that, let's say, there will not be another really fast moving platform that will replace Polkadots and everybody else? Obviously, it, Polkadot is fast, but why are you sure it will not break things? So <laughs> that's the question. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I, I, I can start um, by, by adding a, one small correction to that. Um, um, the vision of Polkadot and the vision um, behind Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems is a multi-chain vision. So we don't necessarily think that one chain will win at the end. What we believe truly is that interoperability between the chains is the answer um, to this question. Um, but I guess um, uh, from this panel here, I guess Jiga might have um, the, best, uh, the best answer because yeah. uh, you guys come from, um, well, corporate world and uh, uh, high value investing, so. Yeah, um, 
one of the reasons why we went straight to Polkadot is also because Polkadot is also, um, in a way, intended for the, the solutions that already have an existing um, footprint, so you are not, your appetite for ri taking risks is much, much lower. Uh, and that's why, after like careful consideration, years of consideration, Polkadot uh, seemed to be one of the clearest uh, decisions to go for. Reason number one, because of the legacy. Um, the same foundry was involved in Ethereum, so it's pretty obvious that uh, the team behind it, the teams behind it are skilled, knowledgeable. Secondly, shared security, which also stems from the fact that uh, Polkadot, Polkadot does have a, a, a large number of, of developers supporting it from the foundation, foundational uh, entities, uh, Parity uh, and, uh, and uh, Web3 foundations and others involved, and of course, us teams building uh, on top of it, future-proofing it, uh, furthermore so, uh, providing feedback on how it works. So it's, uh, it's and, and what, what you meant, mentioned, it's, it's multi-chain. So it's not here to kill anybody. So there's, there's been far too many Ethereum killers in, in, mm -hmm. in the space. And when we heard that something is an Ethereum killer, uh, we immediately thought that you know, supporting such direction would be a suicide because <laughs> we're all building on foundation, foundational components of Ethereum. So there are several, I would say, um, like in the Godfather's movie, um, um, uh, offers you cannot refuse mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> coming from Polkadot. And for us, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward decision as to why we decided to, to follow that path. And it's expanding. It's an open-ended thing. So it will only get bigger, stronger, and uh, more, uh, more solid. You're welcome. Any other questions from the audience? If we don't have a question, I actually have a question, which is uh, from, from Twitter. Um, um, I saw uh, Vitalik tweeting um, about, um, so what is next? So we had ICOs in 2017. Uh, we had uh, 2020 being a DeFi summer, and then afterwards we had an NFT. So what would be the trigger for the, for the next uh, bull run? Uh, maybe Chris. <laughs> I hope Metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Metaverses are definitely a good value proposition for everybody. Why? Uh, as I was telling earlier, metaverse is, or there is no real definition for metaverse. And some might think that it's just a game, but it's actually not a game. It's actually, you can, it's a gateway between real world and something that you cannot accomplish, uh, but you can do it in the metaverse. Let it be uh, visiting a nice museum, uh, I don't know, like in, in Paris. You don't have the money, you don't have the possibilities to travel, or there is another lockdown, and there is no way for you to go there, see the art, see the things, uh, the exhibitions that are happening in there. You can just go inside the metaverse, see the things, learn. Metaverses are going to be I believe a revolution because it opens new economy models, I, I would say. So far, the one that most people is really excited about is just the play to earn, but metaverses will give users the possibility like build to earn. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I have some uh, skills or I'm creative, I can just start building tools. You don't have to be even a 3D designer. We are allowing our users to use a voxel so they can build nice architectures using simple voxels and they can later on sell them as NFTs and whoever bought it, they can place them in the metaverse. We are also looking into a learn to earn. A Bit country is planning to launch the first metaverse university, hopefully. So, yeah, you go there, you attend. And I think Vitaly was also mentioning uh, the fact that uh, these like non transferable NFTs. Yeah. So, if you attend the uh, university in the blockchain, you can get your certificates, and that certificates can be attached to your wallet. They are non transferable. Mm. So, you really prove that it was you who studied the course. You really prove that it was you who went through all the process and uh, performed this project that the yeah. company needed. So everything is shared, is public, because it's a public ledger. Everybody can verify uh, that information. And uh, that's, that's it, I guess. Yeah. 
Awesome. I think, uh, I think Jiga, you, you had a particularly interesting use case uh, uh, yesterday about uh, NFTing something from a real world and then using it as a collateral. Yeah, I'm also going to borrow uh, Akala's words, so then research word, uh, words also in connection to the previous question, uh, what Polkadot is bringing and what, what, what we believe is going to be ne the next boom. Uh, if we just zoom out, first chapter was about Bitcoin, the second chapter was about Ethereum, and third chapter is going to be about Polkadot. <laughs> Um, segueing into you know the fourth chapter of of the you know all the all the parachains, all the awesome uh, multi-chain projects that are being uh, they're being built, not only limited to metaverse. Metaverse, I, in my opinion, really open up a floodgate for creatives to come into, and now we have another floodgate to to open. And uh, the chapter three and chapter four are going to be openers uh, for 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 the floodgates. Uh, and then going back to DeFi, uh, of course, when you are able to describe the physical world using both decentralized knowledge graph technologies and um, NFT-like uh, uh, methodologies, you can essentially use leverage what you own uh, for the DeFi, within the DeFi uh, world. You can use it as a collateral, collateral to, to borrow against, and this is the future. Who wouldn't want to get involved in such a future? We can actually rip more benefits out of your own net worth. Exactly. And uh, I think we're out of time. Uh, uh, thank you so much. If you uh, guys want to have uh, further questions, uh, all the panelists are going to be around, and there's going to be other uh, panels uh, happening here in this space. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes, and Sergey will be giving a demo nice. of or a presentation and Good. a demonstration of some of his robots. So highly recommend everyone check that out in about 10 minutes. Thanks.